your notes in the top margin, you have to take a couple bit of notes above number four. Okay. There are two ways to write the equation of a line. One way is called slope, excuse me, point slope form. The other way is slope intercept form. So you want to write those at the top of the margin above number four. These are the two ways to write the equation of a line. When you're writing point slope form, which is, you probably want to write this down, y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. That's your point slope form. You need to know two things about the line. What do you think you need to know about the line? Nope. Y minus Y1 equals M times the quantity X minus X1. You need to know the slope. That's my M. And one point. That's the X1, Y1. So you need to know a point and you need to know the slope of the line. Hence the name of the form. Point, slope, form. You got to know a point and a slope. Slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. What two things do you think you need to know if you're going to go slope intercept form? Slope and the y intercept. You need the slope and the y intercept, hence the name of the form. You're going to write the equation of a line. You must know its slope. And you need at least one point from the line. Today we will always start in point slope form and we will always end in slope intercept form. Okay, your final equations on your notes and on your homework assignment need to be ending in slope intercept form. To the first example, number four. Mine are misnumbered, but they work. Write an equation in point slope form of a line with a slope of negative 8 that contains point P. That just means it goes through point P. It says to write the final equation in slope intercept form and then standard form. Go ahead and cross off that standard form. We're not going to put them in standard form. We're just going to finalize in slope intercept form. So they tell us we need to start in point slope form. If I were you, I would write that down. Y minus Y1 equals M times the quantity X minus X1. Next week on your quiz, when you write the equations, you have to be able to do it on your own, meaning I'm not going to give you that form. So if I were you, I would write it down each time you use it today. It's just like when you write your name, then you know how to spell it. You know what it is. The more you write it down, it's going to get stuck in your head. Okay? So if we're going to use point slope form, what two things do we need? Slope. And what else? It's point. Yeah. Point slope. I need a point and a slope. And they give me those. They say the slope is negative 8 and the point is 3, negative 6. Those three values are going to be substituted in for y1, m, and x1. Okay. So if my slope is negative 8, where should I substitute it in for? M, right? Because that's what slope is. Uh, equals negative 8. Okay, so we put our slope in there. I have to substitute 3 and negative 6 in for the y1 and the x1 because that's my point. Where should I put the 3? In for the x. Good. That's an x value. That's the x value of my point. So we're going to put them in for x1. Therefore, negative 6, since it's my y value, is going to go in for y1. Point slope form. Cleaning it up, because you don't want to have written minus and negative. y plus 6 equals negative 8 times the quantity x minus 3. This would be if I said write it in point slope form and told you to stop, you would stop here. You want it clean, so you want to do your pluses there. Because point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. This is point slope form. But then it says to put it in slope intercept. What's slope intercept form again? 
y equals mx plus b. So what do I need to do to this equation here in black to get it in slope-intercept form? Get y by itself. So now I can distribute. Now I'm going to distribute to get it into slope-intercept form. y plus 6 equals negative 8x plus 24. And then what do I need to do? Subtract 6 to the right. And y equals negative negative 8x plus 18. y is by itself. We're in that y equals mx plus b form. So we are done. Here's your slope intercept form. Every time you write an equation today, it needs to end in slope intercept form. But you have to start in point slope form. So you're going to end up having both forms on your homework. Yeah. Me too. Okay, so the next one. Write an equation using point slope form of a line that contains the points G and H. Write your final equation in slope intercept form and standard, cross off that and standard, we don't need to do that. We're supposed to use point slope form. That's that y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. In order to use point slope form, I need to know two things about my line. What two things do I have to know? A point and a slope. Do we have a point that the line goes through? Yeah. Do I know the slope? I need to know it. Can I figure it out? Yeah. I can use that slope formula that you had that worksheet on the other day. M equals y1 minus y2 all over x1 minus x2. I have to find the slope between those two points because I need the slope of a line. Um, Z is my first one, so I'm just going to call them x1, y1. And then H is the second point, so we'll call those x2, y2. Substitute them in. So negative 9 minus 1 all over 4 minus negative 1. So it's negative 1 minus 1 more. Negative 10. How about 4 minus negative 1? And negative 10 over 5 becomes negative 2. So the slope of our line is negative 2. I got the slope I need. What else do we need to write the equation of a line? It's a point. I have two of them. Just pick one. It doesn't matter. You want to do G or do you guys want to use H? H? All right. It shouldn't matter. If some of you use G, we should end at the same spot. Point slope form. Y minus. Which of the highlighted values are we going to substitute in for Y1? 1, good, equals m. What should I put in for m? Negative 2 times the quantity x minus negative 1. Then we need to put this in slope-intercept form, which means I have to solve it for which variable? y. We need to get y by itself. OK, y minus 1 equals, well, this on the inside. What does that become? x plus 1? Then I have to distribute my negative 2 to get y by itself. So negative 2x minus 2. Add 1. And you get y equals negative 2x minus 1. Your final answer. That's your slope-intercept form. It tells you you have a slope of negative 2. It goes through the y-axis at negative 1. This guy here, this would be your point slope form. He also tells you that the slope is negative 2, but it tells you that it goes through the point negative 1, 1. It gives you a point on the line, not necessarily the slope-intercept. You have to start with point slope, and then you end in slope-intercept form.
Cool. Third example. Write the equations, equations of the horizontal line and the vertical line that contain point A or pass through that point. Okay. Seven, nine, ten, ten, four, five. Here's A. We're supposed to write the equation for the horizontal line that passes through that point. What way do horizontal lines go again? Side to side. So I'm just going to draw the horizontal line. There. It went through A. What axis does the horizontal line go through? The y-axis. At what value did my blue line pass? Negative 5. That's the equation for the horizontal line. y equals negative 5. Every y value on this blue horizontal line is negative 5. My x has changed, but my y is always negative 5. We're supposed to do the vertical line that passes through this point. Vertical then obviously up and down. What axis does the vertical line go through? The x-axis. At what value? 7. That's the equation for the vertical line. Every x value on this red line is 7. My y's change, but not my x's. When you're doing this on homework, your worksheet tomorrow, your quiz next week, you need to make sure you clarify which one's horizontal and which one's vertical. Cool. Try the next example on your own. Write an equation of a line with a slope negative 1 that passes through the point C. Write your final equation in slope intercept form and cross off that standard form. We're not doing that. y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. You need to know a point and the slope, which they give you both of them. So then substitute them in. y minus negative 4 equals negative 1 times the quantity x minus 2 minus a negative, so this would become y plus 4 equals negative 1 times the quantity x minus 2. Here's your point slope form. To put it in slope intercept form, then I have to solve it for y. So distribute y plus 4 equals negative x plus 2. Subtract 4 on both sides. y equals negative x minus 2 should be your final answer. You have a slope of negative 1. It goes through the y-axis at negative 2. It's giving you your y-intercept. Dawson. Because it's y minus y1, so it's always going to be y minus whatever this y value is. And since it's negative 4, minus a negative becomes plus. Okay, try the next one. All right, on this one, we have to find the slope. So we're going to want to use this. Hopefully, you wrote down your slope formula somewhere on that sheet so you can refer to it when you're doing your homework and stuff. Um, that would give me 5 minus, nope, why is Carol? 0 minus negative 3 all over 5 minus 7. So that would be a positive 3 over a negative 2. So there's our slope. Then you have to pick one of these lines, or one of these points. Do you want 5, 0, or 7, negative 3? 5, 0. It's easy adding 0, just like it's easy multiplying. You can pick 7, negative 3. You should get the same answer. But a 0 is going to make it a lot nicer. So using your point-slope form, when you substitute in, y minus 0 equals negative 3 halves, x minus 5. There's point slope form. Slope intercept form, distribute, and you get y equals negative 3 halves x plus 15 halves, or plus 7 and a half, which is the same thing. Your slope needs to be written as a fraction. If that means improper, then that can be an improper fraction. Don't put a decimal where your slope goes. If it makes more sense to you to write seven or 15 halves as 7.5, that's fine. 
but you can't make this a decimal because we don't know how to graph decimals. Right, Ben? Say yes. What? Oh, sorry. Okay. Did you check your work? Do you have zero minus negative three? Or three minus or negative three minus zero? Over seven minus five? What's seven minus five? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So those are your writing equation examples. On the bottom.